Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. This is a brand new segment. With us is Rohit Srivastav. He's the Chief Investment Officer and Portfolio Manager for Saroj and Banu Fund, and has put together a portfolio index for us with cannabis stocks, with an artificial intelligence-based algorithm that has some predictive analytics. I'm gonna let him dive right into uh, this, uh, this opportunity. We're gonna have once a week repeat here where we kind of give you, uh, for entertainment purposes only, a look into what might happen next week into the cannabis stock market. So with that, Rohit, take it away. Well, thank you, thank you, Josh. Uh, so I thought that maybe I'll pick two of these talks and give like a, an overview of like what basically might be happening with this. Uh, one of them is the Aurora Cannabis, which basically you hear is a, uh, is a five-year part of that. And what really you can see is that it's creating a, a pennant. And what it really, it's a very bullish signal, it's a very bullish signal trying to tell that you know what, there can be a break off happening on the opposite, uh, in the upward direction. Uh, where there is a sudden rise of the stock and then it keeps fluctuating in a in a channel and uh, but on the other side what you can see is the RSI the strength or the relative strength index of this particular stock is uh, is is descending over a period of time so what it really means is in the last whatever number of years three years three four years the the strength of the stock has been going down uh, also, the, the MACD, the moving average uh, convergence divergence, is, is bearish. It is the momentum of the stock is going down over a period of time. But so, it's flatlined. Say that again. Does it kind of look like it's flatlined, like it might be coming back up, like it's, it's almost oversold? Uh, it is oversold at this point, and it could s sell even further. So what mm -hmm. it really means is that, you know, this is the point where the, the, the massive sell-off started. Uh, if you can see my mouse, can you see my mouse? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so this is the point where basically massive sell-off started, and it has been in the downward. It is, it is at a point where it can break off downwards, or it can rebound, rebound back. Now, if it rebounds back and breaks this ten dollars ten dollars point, that's where probably the next jump is going to happen. So, uh, what I would say is that you know, in this in this particular case, if I would if I want to trade this. I will probably wait for either to fall it further down and wait to bounce back on this 200 and moving average. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the point where it probably will more convert back. Or if it bounced back, that might be a point to get back in. But it, this 50 day moving average is where the point where it might be decisive that if it, it will uh, rally further or it might turn back and go further down. So, you can play the small rally between these two, which is like uh, the, the the turning point. If it turns back, um, moving, uh, re rebounding back on selling it on the 50-day moving average, and wait to see if it's bearish. Where it looks like it is going to be bearish from how the momentum is and how the strength of the stock is, it looks like it's going to be bearish. But but if you want to play a short play, that might be that might be the short play I would say. That uh, is to if it bounces back, then sell it at a 50-day moving average. With a uh, with a uh, with a stop loss associated with that. So that range is getting shorter. Does that mean it's going to have a breakout? That is correct. So it, it is at a breakout and a breakout, and it could either break out. Um, it could either break out in the next one week downwards, or uh, it, it can fall further, or it can break out somewhere like uh, in the. Uh, Considering the, uh, the the patterns, it would break out uh, somewhere in the first um, first quarter of 2020. That could be the next breakout. But it, but I mean that's that's the uh, it, there is no timeline on this, right? So but these timelines are designed based on um, how uh, on the history on the past what has happened. But what it really looks like at this point is it could. It could either break out uh, somewhere in the first quarter of first quarter, uh, first quarter of 2020. That's probably is, has a high probability of that. Interesting. What's the other one? What else you got? So the other one is a car thera therapeutics, and what this this is a very strong stock. This is a very strong uh, company. Uh, performed very well in the last uh, how many years, and even in this downturn when when the, uh, most of the stocks are selling out. It hasn't really broken off the, the bearish signal. So from the MACD point of view, it, it consistently has an update. But even from the MACD point of view, it is converging and it's trending upwards. 
uh, it is converging. And it is a very bullish signal from the point that, you know, it might, uh, it might stay steady at this point, uh, but, but it is at a point where it, uh, it could break $25. $25. What I would say is that, you know, if it breaks 25, that's when you have to get back in. Yes, we have to get in. So people who are already in this trade, who already own this, they probably can hold it for maybe till, uh, till this moving average turns basically negative. Where, um, and this is one of the, my favorite ones, which is the 13, eight and five moving averages, exponential. Till it converges, that's where the point you, they can hold it. But if they are not holding and they wanna get back into this trade, I would probably wait for either to break to 25 or wait for the next cycle to start. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if I have to guess, if I have to not guess, if I have to uh, predict based on what the chart says, the, the relative strength is pretty good. The strength of the stock is pretty good. It, is, it has been consistently strong throughout the cycle of the last whatever years. It has its ups and downs and like, like here, if somebody was in a trade, this would have this would have been the exit point where the 13-day uh, moving average is basically got higher than that, and that would have been the point to get out of the trade. But that's the part which every trader, every investor has to do their own in, own, own research at when they're going to get out of the trade. When what is the point to do that? Either it's a stop loss or it's a signal. One of those two. And if they do on a stop loss, they probably, if they rallied on this, they're probably somewhere with a 10% stop loss right here. And if they basically uh, did based on uh, a signal, this signal would have been the point to get out of the trade. Uh, so even in this, for, for any example, right, this one where there is an uptrend, like if somebody got into trade here, where there's a, there's a confirmation of the signal that it's, it's gonna go upwards, the selling point would be somewhere here which is from uh, whatever, $7 to $14 of trade. But that's the part of, the, of the, the trading aspect that people have to understand. Whoever is trading, they have to understand when to get out of the trade. But at this point where this talk is, uh, it is not at a point to get in. And people who have, it's a point to hold and see what happens. That's, that's where it lies. Mm -hmm. But out of all of them, I think this probably looks like a very good stock to hold long term. Hmm. People are having that. All very cool stuff. I can't wait till next week to see what happens. Interesting. I guess we're going to have to come back to the talking hedge next week and find out. Sure. That sounds awesome. So with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Or don't. And I'm out. <laughs>